to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by his statement in relation to the Paris Agreement 2030 emission reduction targets? Quote, we are going to meet our commitments and obligations. Or does he agree with his Minister for Resources who said yesterday that, quote, we are not going to meet the 2030 dreamy fairy tale aspirational figures? Uh, yes, I stand by my statement. The government is going to meet its obligations and commitments that it's made on climate change. And I also stand by the uh, statement from the Minister of uh, Resources as well, because he was clearly talking about uh, the previous government's 100% uh, renewable electricity target, which actually is actually a fairy tale and is counterproductive. <clears throat> Does his government have any targets or policies to reduce fossil fuel use across the industry? energy and transport to replace the 2030 renewable electricity target, and if not, why not? Yeah, we're going to actually electrify New Zealand by doubling the amount of renewable electricity that's in New Zealand, so we can make the transition well and make our sectors move to clean, green energy. Is he concerned about the growing contradiction under this government between New Zealand's international and climate commitments and domestic plans which undermine efforts to reduce emissions, such as reopening oil and gas drilling and cancelling the clean car discount? Uh, absolutely not. We are deeply committed to delivering on our climate goals and commitments. The way we go about doing that may be different from the previous government, but don't misunderstand our commitment to the targets and goals. Does he stand by his statement, quote, there is no reason for climate deniers and climate minimalists in the 21st century. And if so, is he embarrassed by the statements of the Minister of Resources that, quote, one of the great lies about climate change is that, yes, apparently it's a crisis? Climate change is a crisis. Does he agree with the Climate Change Commission that, quote, weakening action on climate policy during times of adverse economic conditions which climate change is only likely to exacerbate, is not sustainable and will greatly compromise Aotearoa New Zealand's ability to meet emissions budgets and the 2050 target. We're not weakening our actions on climate change. We're just going about it a different way. Will he, <laughs> will he or will he not instruct all ministers to implement the Commission's advice in their work programme. A point of order, David Seymour. Mr Speaker, I apologise to interrupt the member. You may not have heard, but after the Prime Minister resumed his seat, I heard Chloe Horbrook say that's a demonstrable lie. Um, it's quite a serious accusation to make of any member, and I wonder what your view is and how you're going to enforce such rules. Uh, look, I did not hear it from up here, but if the member made a statement like that, she may consider withdrawing and apologising. Uh. Speaking in the point of order, Mr. Speaker. Yes. My point was that it is demonstrable. Point of order. Point of order, please. Point of order, Honourable Speaker. Speaker I, th I think the member should be given a chance to withdraw that, because it may well be on the Hansard audio record, and if that's the case, then we know where this goes after that. There are Lara all Davidson. sorts of statements on start, the Hansard record, including from start, that very sorry. minister. Excuse me. Start again. I'll call the member so the whole House can hear her. The Honourable Marable Davidson speaking to the point of order. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I apologise. There are a whole range of statements on the Hansard record, and I am happy to accept clarity for what will and will be struck off Hansard records. Thank you. That wasn't the point being made by the Right Honourable Winston Peters. However, I've got advice here. Uh, standing, uh, sorry, Speaker's Ruling 48.1, saying a member is lying is always out of order. So if that is what the member said and does not want to withdraw it, uh, then, then that does have other consequences. Speaking to the point of order. Mr Speaker, I was speaking to the content of the policies as put forward by this government and the fact that the content of those policies are a lie. If the inference is that therefore the Minister or the Prime Minister are a liar, that wasn't the statement that I was making, but I was pointing out that it is demonstrable on the evidence that the undertakings from this government are completely contrary to our climate commitments. Okay. OK, I think we'll move on. That is an opinion. Uh, others will make a judgment on whatever the Hansard record might eventually show. 
Supplementary, Honourable Marama Davison. To the Prime Minister, will he or will he not instruct all ministers to implement the Commission's advice in their work programmes? Uh, our government's committed to delivering on climate change and our ministers are making sure that they can do that through their respective portfolios. Supplementary, uh, Ronald Moore, Chris Hopkins. Can he name one decision that his government has taken to date that will materially reduce New Zealand's net greenhouse gas emissions? If so, what is it? Uh, it's our plan to actually increase and double the amount of renewable energy, electricity. That's not going to reduce the emissions. Thank you. We come now to. Yeah, good. Nice argument across the house. We come now to question number.